What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL world? How you doing, division rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel, the sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever it is you get around to watching this video, guys. First off, thank you all for tuning in. I really, really do appreciate it. If you are new to the channel, if you could do me a huge favor, guys, hit that subscribe button. Look, it means a lot to add new people to the community. I appreciate each and every one of you guys who join the community. It's really, really is appreciated, guys. Number two to my OGs, please hit that thumbs up button, guys. That's how we communicate with YouTube. Y'all know that spiel. We communicate with YouTube, and then in return, YouTube takes our content and pushes it out. All right, y'all. So today's topic. Look, we did picks one through 10. We've done picks 11 through 20. And now today we were going to do picks 21 through 32. Here's the deal. Yesterday, I told you guys, I'm a guy who's been saying, hey, look, you know, I wouldn't discount the Eagles trading back in the draft. I don't think that it's necessary to not, you know, to move forward or to move backwards. You can just stay put and still make, you know, good picks. With that said, as I really laid out the draft and I was looking at team needs and the players that are available and the best available on the board, I was like, wow, like, I got to admit, if the board falls out the way I envisioned it, I could definitely see a scenario where the Eagles move up. And yesterday, I did move the Eagles up in the draft. I moved them up to the 18th pick to take none other than Henry Ruggs. So today, we're going to talk about that back half of the draft, guys. And I know it might not seem like, well, the Eagles aren't picking. It's not that important. It is important, guys, because the way that this draft board falls greatly impacts who's going to be available for the Eagles to come round two. So without further ado, guys, hey, let's jump into it. Let's talk about the back half of the first round. And look, there's I still think you got to keep your eye on receivers, man. There's a lot of teams drafting in this back half of the draft that need wide receivers. So, all right, y'all. Let's go ahead and jump into the topic today. Let's get it. PFF pass blocking grade this past season. A guy that's great in pass protection, dominated at the senior bowl. All right, guys. As I stated earlier, this is the third video of this mock draft for the first round. So if you missed the uh, first two, I'll link them below so you guys can go ahead and watch those. Um, listen, guys, if you left comments yesterday, man, you know, it's busy with the eBay store, guys, and, and making these videos. These are very involved in detailed videos, guys. So just give me a moment, and I'll circle back for you guys, and, and we'll get that worked out, all right? I do apologize, but y'all know how it is. Sometimes, man, life gets a little crazy, and you do what you got to do. All right, so here's the deal. I already made some trades, so I'm going to go over the list of, of who is picking 21 through 32. If you missed yesterday's video, I moved the Eagles up in the draft, so go back and watch that video, and you'll see who I have the Eagles selected. So with the 20, uh, the 21st pick will go to Miami, the 22nd to Buffalo, the 23rd to New England, the 24th to New Orleans, 25th to Minnesota, 26th to Miami, 27th to Seattle, 28th to Baltimore, 29th to Tennessee, 30th to Green Bay, 31st to San Francisco, and the 32nd pick to the Kansas City Chiefs. Miami's picking twice in this here selection, so that's something to keep note of. And without further ado, let's go ahead and let's roll into it. Um, listen, Miami already picked earlier in this draft, and I gave them their franchise quarterback in Tua. OK, so they got their franchise quarterback. Miami has pretty good weapons already around that, you know, that young man, that quarterback. You know, they've got Devontae Parker. They've got Gasecki at tight end. Like they can they can definitely pose challenges and they can take a young guy and, and give him targets to throw to already. So I really don't see them going receiver here. Um, I think that they have pretty damn good receiver play already as it is. They have a really good tight end as it is. So what I do see them doing is going and getting this man at his left tackle. So with the 21st pick in the 2020 draft, I have the Miami Dolphins selecting offensive tackle Josh Jones. I know it might seem a little controversial because that's above his, you know, rankings. With that said, guys, it's hard to find left tackles, hard to find tackle play in the NFL. If you think you got a guy available and you already have a young quarterback, you're going to do what you can do to go short up. So that's why I think that they're going to reach probably – six to seven picks ahead of where most people probably projected Josh Jones to go to go and get him. All right, guys, let's move on. With the 22nd pick in the 2020 NFL draft, we have the Buffalo Bills on the clock. Now, 
Buffalo has its choice of many receivers. And a lot of people might be expecting the Bills with this pick to take Justin Jefferson. However, when I did my research on the Bills, I discovered that apparently this team is really big on T. Higgins. They um, apparently really like this young man. They've, they've spent some time with this young man. And with the 22nd pick in the 2020 NFL draft, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting none other than wide receiver from Clemson, T, to the Higgins. All right, guys, look, T. Higgins a big guy. Um, some people won't be impressed with his 40 time. When you turn the film on, he's a little faster than what his 40 time will probably reflect. Um, big physical guy. He will attack the ball at the point. He's probably a prototypical X receiver. Probably not a guy you're going to see play a lot of Y, a lot of flank. Um, big guy, though, you can put him on the line of scrimmage, and if a guy tries to jam him, good luck. He's a big, lanky kind of guy. He's probably going to get past you there. He's definitely like that um, kind of ball control X receiver where he can work the middle. He can work those hitch and comebacks and things like that. He got a little vertical game to him. Uh, he's, he's, I guess probably the, what I'm beating around the bush to say, guys, is that he's a young Alshon Jeffries-like type receiver. Although I am interested to see what his vertical will be or if he's even going to do the vertical. I got I don't think he did anything at the combine. I have to really look back at that. But I do wonder how much he can, how far he can elevate, but he's got a big frame to play from. He's got a pretty big catch radius. So all those things seem to indicate that type of player. All right, guys, moving on. With the 23rd pick, I have the New England Patriots on the clock. And here's the thing. The Patriots' offense is abysmal as well. It's just not very good. But Bill Belichick's a defensive-minded coach. I just don't see them going offense this, you know, on the 23rd pick in the draft. And, you know, the bottom line is, is that a really good football player is still on the clock right now. I mean, an exceptionally talented guy. So with the 23rd pick in the 2020 NFL draft, I have the New England Patriots shocking the world and not taking a receiver here, but instead going defensive end, A.J. Epineza from Iowa. Big, physical, violent hands. This kid can be the next big pass rusher there. He can play that five technique in a 34. He can play the traditional 43, you know, defensive end. He's not a wide nine type guy, okay? He's not going to be a wide nine. He's probably not going to be very effective playing as a joker standing up. But if you put him in as a traditional five, he's got some flexibility to go inside as a three and give you some inside versatility. I mean, he's a good football player. I mean, this is a guy that can make your defensive line go over the top. All right, y'all, the 24th pick. On the clock, I have new, the New Orleans Saints with the 24th pick. So when I looked over the New Orleans Saints' needs, you know, they definitely could, they could definitely use a quarterback. And, and I still think if Jordan Love was on the board, you could see them possibly look that way. I think that's why Tampa Bay wasn't going to be foolish enough to allow this kid to slip past their pick. With that said, you got Drew Brees there. You probably got one last run in you, New Orleans. You got one last run in you. What do you need to help you with that run? You need more playmakers. So with the 24th pick, in the 2020 NFL Draft, I have the New Orleans Saints selecting wide receiver from LSU, Justin Jefferson. I think this is a great fit. I think he would schematically fit what they do. You pair him with, you know, a Drew Brees. You pair him with the other receiving options they have in New Orleans, and this kid could be a monster in this type of system. This is a pick I dread playing in the NFC because I know that he would really – kick that offense up a notch. But I'm not picking as a fan. I'm picking my best guest estimator analyzing what's going on. And if I'm the Saints and this kid's available, I'm taking him off the board. Okay, guys, with the 25th pick, I had the Minnesota Vikings on the clock. All right, Minnesota has a lot of needs in their secondary. It looks like they might possibly lose both cornerbacks and the safety. You got a lot of options on the board, okay? You got Delpit and McKinney still, still both on the board. You got Christian Fulton still on the board. I think this is a pick your flavor, what you think the biggest need is. And to me, I think Minnesota's going corner. So with the 25th pick in the 2020 NFL draft, I got the Minnesota Vikings selecting corner from LSU, Christian Fulton. Look, I think he's one of these guys that fits multiple schemes. I think he's a very versatile football player. I think he can come up in a man press situation and press you. I think he can play on an island and like a cover three. I just think he's a good football player. And I just, I, the Vikings, they need cornerback help, man. I just don't think this guy slips past him. 
All right, guys, with the 26th pick in the 2020 draft, I had the Miami Dolphins on the clock again. Once again, you went out and got your left tackle in the last pick. In your first pick, you went out and got your franchise quarterback. Now, it's time to continue fixing that offensive line. And boy, do they ever need some help fixing that offensive line. So with the 26th pick, I have the Miami Dolphins selecting guard from Fresno State, Netteen Muti. Look, violent player inside. I think he's going to be a really good football player. I definitely could see them maybe going more of a guard center type, like a Cesar Ruiz instead of a, a, a Muti. But I gave him the best player available as an interior player. So that was my thought process behind that. But now you're building the cornerstones of a very good offense because they didn't. They need offensive linemen, guys. It's it's not pretty there. All right. The Seattle Seahawks are on the clock with the 27th pick. And like their brother in the Miami Dolphins, they need offensive line help. Boy, oh boy, do they need it. Some of you are going to say, Gate City, Steve, you're killing us, bro. You're reaching on some of these guys. People reach, guys. You know this. I'm just taking my best guess estimate of where teams are going to reach. We all know player, that, that teams reach for players, especially in the back half. So what I got the Seattle Seahawks doing is trying to shore up that offensive tackle play. They need to make sure Russell Wilson you know, isn't trying to escape for his life on every play. So I got them taking offensive tackle out of USC, Austin Jackson, with the 27th pick in the NFL draft. All right, guys, with that, the Baltimore Ravens are on the clock with the 28th pick. Baltimore has a very interesting, you know, dynamic going on there with the quarterback play, okay? Look, I think you keep building around that young man, Lamar Jackson. I think you go get him his future center. So with the 28th pick in the 2020 NFL draft, of the Baltimore Ravens selecting center out of Michigan, Cesar Ruiz. Look, I think he's the best center in, on the board. I think he's the best center period in the draft. And I think he's a good football player. And I think Baltimore could use him. And I'll tell you what, man, you keep building around this kid, Lamar Jackson, I think you're going to get a return in your dividends offensively from this kid. I think he's a very good football player. All right, guys, with the 29th pick, I have the Tennessee Titans on the clock. And look, when you look at the Tennessee Titans, they're a really difficult team to project because they definitely need some uh, pass rush, whether that's defensive end, outside linebacker. They need some way of generating a pass rush there. They got a very on you know you know certain situation going on with the quarterback. They probably would be thrilled if Jordan Love was still on the board, but I have them going way before their pick. That's why I think Tampa Bay has to be pressed because there are teams in the back half of this draft that will need a quarterback. They could use a running back, so I do think that this is a spot where it is a slight, I'll say a slight possibility that we could see our first running back come off the wall or off the board with Jonathan Taylor, but. I don't think that, you know, obviously Tennessee's not looking for a number one. They got that. They're looking for a number two. And I think Jonathan Taylor's more of that number one featured back thing. So I, I still think we'll see Taylor left on the board. I think you got to go back to pass rusher when it comes to the Tennessee Titans. And I got Tennessee with the 29th pick selecting outside linebacker from Wisconsin, Zach Bond. Let me explain. I know it seems early for him, but the thing is, there's just not that many pass rushing outside linebackers kind of can rotate in on the defensive end can do can play both Zach Bond in a 43 can definitely be a joker wide nine type you know in a 34 he can definitely play the rush you know linebacker positioning on that outside linebacker there's just not a lot of those guys in this draft I do think his stock is rising I do think this is a guy that might creep his way into the late first round early second round so I'm going to take him here because I think Tennessee just has a need here and he's the only player on the board I really trust with this projection, to be quite honest. All right, guys. Moving on. The 30th pick belongs to the Green Bay Packers. And look, Green Bay, they really need to figure out a few things on their football team. They definitely could use a wide receiver. I mean, look, they need more, they need more weapons around Aaron Rodgers, to be quite frank about it. They could use a linebacker. They use corner play. Right now, you could see a guy like Patrick Queen maybe sneak in, but that's not where I'm going with this pick. Corners are pretty much off the board who I think have first round value. You could definitely see, you know, a Bryce Hall, maybe a Damon Arnett, maybe, you know, there's a few, Jalen uh, Johnson. There's a few guys that have been projected to kind of maybe slip in that first round. You know, Jeff Gladney. I don't think you go there with those guys. I think those guys are second round guys. I think you stay true to what the value is, what your needs are. You need a wide receiver. 
you could use a true X wide receiver, a guy who can really be a possession type to really free up Devontae Adams. And I think the perfect fit there for Green Bay at number 30 is for them to make the selection of wide receiver from Colorado, LaVisca Chenault. I think you put Chenault with Aaron Rodgers and with Devontae Adams, and I think you got something in Green Bay. I think this would be a really good pickup for them. But, I mean, I guess we'll have to see how the way draft plays out. I'm just looking at team needs and player availability. I could see LaVisca Chenault going in that 30th pick. All right, let's get to our Super Bowl teams, ladies and gents. San Francisco. The San Francisco 49ers hold the 31st pick. And they really need interior offensive line play. Guard, center. They could use, they could use a wide receiver. They could use a safety. Because of the need of safety in the secondary, I do think you could see a McKinney come off the board here. I do think Grant Delpa come off the board here. I think you could see those picks. But, you know, because there really hasn't been anyone coming off the board and there is pretty good value at the safety position this draft, I feel like they're just going to stick to what is coming off the board, which is offensive linemen, and they're going to go get their guy now. So at the 31st pick, I have the San Francisco 49ers selecting guard slash center Lloyd Cushenberry. So, look, he's a guy that can play that center position. You can play interior. You can move him around a little bit, guard, left guard, right guard, center, wherever you really want him at. I think he gives them what San Francisco really has built its identity around. That's that's just where I think they're going. Like I said, you could see safety there. Maybe when I do this draft again following free agency, Depending on what they do in free agency, that could change my mind. But right now, I'm saying Lloyd Cushenberry, guard center. All right. The Super Bowl champion, Kansas City Chiefs, will be on the clock with the 32nd pick. And I got to tell you, because this draft is so deep, it ain't a bad spot to be picking 32 in the first round. Because you can really let the talent fall down to you. Kansas City could use a corner. They could use linebacker. They could use running backs. You know, you can look at this point. And you can look at someone like Swift and say, hey, Swift would make a lot of sense here for them. You know, keep adding pieces to that offense. Give them a guy that they can kind of build around with John. I'm sorry, not Swift, I'm sorry, Jonathan Taylor. My bad, guys. Taylor would make a lot of sense there. But I'm not going Taylor here at this pick. I think if you look at Kansas City, an exceptional pass rush turned their season around. I think you keep adding to that pass rush. Keep adding with Clark. Keep adding to that defensive line. I think Kansas City goes defensive end out of Penn State here. So with the 32nd pick in the NFL draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select defensive end Penn State, Yatir Gross Matos. Exceptional value, 32nd pick. Dude can add a pass rush. I, if, if I'm Kansas City and there's a guy like this on the board, I'm taking him. All right, guys, this is my first round pick. So let me just go back over the players in the positions again. So. With the 21st pick, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting offensive tackle from Houston, Josh Jones. With the 22nd pick, I have the Buffalo Bills selecting Clemson wide receiver T. Higgins. 23rd, I got New England taking defensive end A.J. Epineza. 24, I got the New Orleans Saints taking wide receiver Justin Jefferson. 25, I have the Minnesota Vikings selecting cornerback Christian Fulton. 26, I have the Miami Dolphins taking guard Fresno State, Nateen Muti. 27, I have the Seahawks selecting USC offensive tackle, Austin Jackson. 28, I have the Baltimore Ravens selecting center, Cesar Ruiz. 29, I have the Tennessee Titans taking outside linebacker from Wisconsin, Zach Bond. All right, 30, I have the Green Bay Packers selecting that big physical X receiver, LaVisca Chenault. You got your yak guy, your yard after the catch. 31, I have the San Francisco 49ers selecting guard slash center, Lloyd Cushenberry. And with the 32nd pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, I have the Kansas City Chiefs selecting defensive end Penn State, Yatir Gross Matos. All right, y'all. Let's finish this video out. Let's talk about the questions of the day. All right, ladies and gents. Let's talk about the obvious two players I left off of the first round. And I know it's going to be shocking. I left off Xavier McKinney and I left off Grant Delpit. I think they're both going to be high second round picks. You might ask, why? Why would you leave them off? Because, listen, in my opinion, these are certainly first-round graded players. I think the skill set is there. I think that if you're just basing off of talent and talent alone, who are the best players there 
they would be in the top 32 in my opinion. With that said, it's about team needs, guys. And past San Francisco, there's just not a lot of safety needy teams in the back half of the draft. Miami doesn't need a safety. Buffalo doesn't really need a safety. New England doesn't really need a safety. New Orleans doesn't need a safety. Seattle doesn't need it. Baltimore doesn't need it. Tennessee doesn't really need it. Uh, Green Bay doesn't really need it. San Francisco does, and that's the one place I could kind of see one of those guys slipping in there. And Anthony Harris being let go from Minnesota. So San Francisco and Minnesota are the two places I could kind of see maybe leaning safety, but I don't think it's going to happen in the first round. So I think that they're going to be early second round picks. I mean, unless someone trades up into that back half, that's a possibility. Let's talk for a second about what I have coming on the board. Everyone, when they do these mock drafts, I do feel sometimes like they're just projecting the best players, not necessarily the best fits for teams. Look, I have a lot of offensive linemen. I went heavy on offensive line, defensive line, and quarterbacks were probably higher than most people expect it. I think when you add those together, it's probably almost 20 picks out of the 32 picks are coming from that range. But I do want people to keep in mind, okay, although I slid McKinney and although I slid Grant Delpit, who are clearly first-round talents out of the first round, I did draft six receivers. I didn't put them in the top 10, but off my board, I had C.D. Lamb, Jerry Judy, okay, Henry Ruggs, T. Higgins, Justin Jefferson, and LaVisca Chanel all going in the first round as six receivers, okay? So I did go pretty heavy in the wide receivers. Now, look, if you're asking me, am I personally, do I personally want the Eagles to move up to go get Henry Ruggs? No, that's not what I would do, but I'm not the only person who makes these decisions, okay? It's not like I have a say in what the hell's going on there. I'm just trying to judge from what it looks like on the outside, judging Howie Roseman, judging the team needs, I think he's going to go up and, and go get Henry Ruggs. And I do think Henry Ruggs is going to fall further in a draft than people are anticipating because people are going to be in on quarterbacks and offensive linemen. These offensive linemen test it really, really well. And I do think that the average fan is getting a little too in love with the 40 times of these receivers, not realizing that, man, these offensive linemen put up really good workouts. So I feel like they're going to go a lot higher than people are anticipating and with a lot more frequency than people are, are anticipating. And I think that's going to slide the draft. I do think that Jordan Love is going to be one key to this draft in terms of how things will lay out. Watch Jordan Love because I think Tampa Bay has no choice but to try to go get a guy because I don't think they're going to be in position. So if they don't go re-sign Jameis Winston, that's a key thing to watch for in free agency, guys. I think they're going to be in a really peculiar, you know, peculiar situation. The other guy I will tell you to watch out for is I would really, really watch out for Josh Jones, the offensive tackle out of Houston. From what I understand is he's the best pass blocking offensive lineman, offensive tackle. Hopefully I didn't say tight end there, but offensive tackle in the draft. Um, listen, I think him and Jordan Love can definitely cause teams to go reach above the value of where they're placed to go get them because of team needs. I would watch those two players because that can really slide the draft, in my opinion. Those are the two guys I'm really keying in on in terms of this pre-free agency thing, all right? Free agency will skew this, guys. If you ask me who some of my favorite low-key guys are, I'm a Denzel Mims guy, and I really, really like Jalen Rieger. I think Jalen Rieger's being slept on because he ran that 4-4-7, but when you turn the film on, he's faster than that, guys. He's a lot faster than that. The kid's 42-inch vertical also pops on film. You throw that kid back shoulder towards the sideline, he's spectacular. Like, I think he's being slept on. I think he's a lot better player than they think. But I also, if they go out and go trade up to go get Henry Ruggs, I'm not going to complain. You can't. It's hard to find 427, 428, 40 speed in this league with a guy who can jump 42 inches. I do think Ruggs has some development things that have to happen, but I think his raw athleticism will get him on the field, even though he's going to have to learn some intricate details about route running and stuff. Nonetheless, the kid can play. I'm not going to be dissatisfied with that selection. All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I, I really do appreciate it, guys. Hopefully you guys know that I really do appreciate y'all choosing to spend 20 to 30 minutes because we all know Steve can't keep a video under 15 minutes. If you're looking for that, guys, I'm not your guy. I, I've tried. I'm just, I'm not good at that. All right, y'all, so here's what I got for your questions of the day. Number one, guys, let me know, what is your opinion about the draft positioning? I want to know, do you believe we should trade up, stay put, or trade back. Now, this is preference. Would you prefer the Eagles to trade up, stay put, or trade back? 
My preference is to trade back. My belief is we'll trade up. So I prefer us to trade back and gain more picks. I believe we'll trade up and go get rugs. All right, number two, I want to know who your first round target is. Leave me a name in the comments, guys. For me, I'm not saying it's the guy that that I would, if I was the GM, I'm not saying that I would necessarily make this move, but just judging from the fact of what's going on, I, I honestly think Howie Roseman is probably going to go up there and draft Henry Ruggs. So Henry Ruggs is who I'm saying is probably going to be a pick. But I'm interested, especially you defensive guys. Hit me up and let me know the names that you got. All right, number three. We all, we all know that the first that first round talent always will slide down the draft board. It happens every year. Guys that are first round talents fall outside the first round. Sorry about the phone, guys. So I want to know what two players, give me at least two players you think are going to fall outside the first round that are first round talent level but won't be drafted in the first round. I'll give you three. I said it will be Grant Delpit, Xavier McKinney, and then Patrick Queen. I think all three of those dudes are really good football players. They're all worthy of a first-round pick. But just judging team needs and in the, in the way that certain teams value positions, I think those three guys are going to slide, and I think they're going to be incredible values in the second round. So if I had to take a guess, that's what I would guess, knowing that there's a possibility that all three of those guys could be late first-round selections. All right, y'all. Peace. I'm out of here. Please, let me know your thoughts, guys, because I'm actually really interested in knowing what you guys think about this. All right, y'all. I'm out of here, y'all. You know what time it is. E-A-E-L-E-S. All right, y'all. Let's go, Eagles.